I plan to stay drug free. I plan to stay drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. I pledge to be drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. Good afternoon. Welcome to Expose Under the Sun, sponsored by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. I'm your host, Darwin Griffin, and we are speaking to you live from Holland Park and from Detroit, uh, Detroit under the auspices of the Honorable Mayor Michael Duggan, and Holland Park under the auspices of the Honorable Mayor Hubert Yap. And again, we are live. If you'd like to join in on our conversation, our calling numbers are area code 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, 313-868-4336. And the website is www.tv33whpr.com. And it, it kind of excuse my appearance today. Uh, today was kind of an interesting day for me. It's been a busy day. It's going to be a busier afternoon because we're out today. Uh, APRI, the Detroit Down River chapter, the Metro chapter, and CBTU, Luna, and the coalition of uh, labor and union workers are all getting together today. And we have been over at... 1191 local over on the boulevard right there at 2161 west grand boulevard and that's laborers local 1191 in detroit right across the street from where if those of you that know, know where tabernacle church is at right there on the corner of grand river and the boulevard and dexter where all those three streets intersect at as well as across the street from northwestern high school but we'll be doing voter registration voter education we're going to have refreshments and we're doing a car wash and i know i'm going to say the four letter word that a lot of you are probably excited when you hear this word mentioned when you say something that you're doing and the four letter word is free it is free so if you'd like to get your car washed you like to get educated in terms of say on the voting process you'd like to register to vote and you also need to complete the census and you got a little bit of, you know, you might have a few hunger pains. We got some food over there, and we got, you know, they're also we're selling T-shirts through our uh, APRI Detroit Down River chapter. Uh, I wish I had a brought one in. I should have wore it, but, you know, I didn't want to put it all over my hoodie. But um, it's a beautiful T-shirt that talks about Black Lives Matter. And if you'd like to come today, it's going to be from, it's from it was from 8 o'clock this morning until 8 o'clock this evening. So please, if you, once you get off work today or if you're out and about, please go over there. That's Michael Aaron. We appreciate you, Michael Aaron, who's the uh, president of Local 1191. And so if you want to get your car washed, get some free food, please stop on by. And this is through the AFL-CIO constituency groups that are sponsoring this. Also, too, um, just doing a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this coming Saturday, uh, the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus, under the auspices of the uh, president, uh, Keith D. Williams, were given a um, meeting of the minds, and it's bridging the generational gap. And it's going to be held over at Seoul Village, which is located at 12901 Auburn, and that's near Evergreen and Schoolcraft. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a conversation with black men just to kind of talk to them about uh, entrepreneurship, talking about the voting process, the election process, and just trying to go and get black men to go and be 
engaged with each other, how to work with each other, especially in starting a business or just in support of any other events or activities that they're involved with. So please, uh, if you're you know free that day, uh, please come on out again. That's at 12901 Auburn Street. That's about three, four blocks east of Evergreen and just south of Schoolcraft. And again, this is hosted by the uh, Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus, which I am the vice chair for the state. Uh, and also wanted to let everyone know too, that if you are interested, you can look on my Facebook page and also look on our first vice chair, Miss Alexis Ramsey's Facebook page as well, as well as Keith D. Williams' page as well. So we'll be promoting that at the same time. And just also too, just uh, I mentioned on this show a couple weeks ago that uh, you know I lost uh, one of my sister-in-laws, uh, Miss Edna Harris. And they're having the um, viewing this Friday and her homegoing services are going to be this Saturday. So again, uh, our hearts, you know, go out to uh, her and to our family as well. So please uh, keep our family lifted up in your prayers. And just want to give a quick little shout out. Uh, you know, my, my compadre just walked into the studio. I have to always give her a shout out whenever she comes in my presence. Uh, and that is the first vice chair of the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus. The awesome, I'm sure her name probably doesn't have to be announced because probably if I describe her and tell all of the things that she does and how awesome she is, the first name that probably will come across your mouth either in voice or in whisper is going to be Miss Alexis Ramsey. So we definitely want to give a shout out to Ms. Ramsey and also a shout out to her family as well. So, you know, Ms. Ramsey is doing a, a, a very admirable job in terms of saying, making sure that Mama Ramsey and Papa Ramsey are well taken care of. So shout outs to them. And also want to give a shout out, I'm a, I'm a, because this is a point of privilege, I'm going to give a shout out to ISIS as well. So that'll put a smile on everybody's face over there in the Ramsey household. And also just wanted to let everybody know too, that again, just a reminder, today is National Voter Registration Day. So make certain that you find persons, just like what we were talking about what we're doing over there at 1191 Local, to register to vote. So the Deltas, the AKAs, and other uh, fraternal and sorority organizations are getting together to you know, do some things for making certain that people are registered to vote in conjunction with NAACP, as you see the cap that I'm wearing today. And lastly, I want to you know, let everybody know too, make sure that you complete the census. Uh, if you have someone that you talk to that asks you if you've completed the census, if you haven't, please, please, we ask you to complete that census. If you've been sitting on it and you just haven't completed it yet, please make certain that you complete that census because that's important because that's a lot of dollars that we will not be entitled to if you don't complete that census. So please, we're talking about school lunches. We're talking about a lot of events, a lot of activities, and a lot of endowments that the city as well as students will be allowed to receive. So please complete that sentence because your voice, just as in the voting process on November the 3rd, matters and it counts. And I, I really just want to say to everyone that, um, you know, our, our hearts, our condolences, our sympathies go out to the family of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the uh, Supreme Court Justice. And, you know, we know how important, you know, her voice was with the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's something that is going to be, uh, she's going to be sorely missed. But in the process, the current person in the White House is trying to hurry up and get a replacement for her. So uh, one of the things that, uh, Justice Ginsburg said before she made her transition was that she was hoping that she would still be able to see the election day. And unfortunately, God, you know, decided different. 
but um, you know we're hoping that you know we can not have a replacement until the next administration comes in so you know I'm, I'm not trying to call out any names or say anything in particular but you know the main thing is is just that we hope that whoever's the person that's going to replace her will be someone that will make certain that we get equal justice from the Supreme Court as well as other courts throughout the country. So again, our hearts, our prayers, our thoughts go out to the family of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Okay, uh, with all that said, I think I've done enough. I've checked off everything I need to do outside of another little thing I can think about before I introduce my special guest, uh, Ms. Vicki Dobbins with the school board in River Rouge that this coming Saturday, um, just keep abreast of my Facebook page because I'll be hosting a conversation about race. This will be the third conversation that uh, I'll be hosting and we've been doing it for the past couple of months. Um, myself, uh, the Deputy Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Hester Wheeler, uh, this is done through Sam Stark, Kay Hellinen, through the Southeast Michigan Jobs with Justice and we're just going to have a, a, a real good dialogue talking about uh, just racism that exists and what you can do to offset some of the things that have been happening to you and to your family and friends when it comes down to um, just racism in general. So we want to try and dispel that. We want to try and make certain that people understand that it is still alive and, you know, and present throughout the country. And we want to try and go and take that narrative off the tongues of a lot of people so that people can work together, love together, and be able to get along with each other. Okay. All right. With all that said, now my special guest today is Ms. Vicki Dobbins. And again, I, as, just as I said with Ms. Ramsey, probably needs no introduction. Um, Ms. Dobbins has a prominent role with the school board out in the city of River Rouge. And I'm sure that any time that you see Ms. Dobbins, the first thing Ms. Dobbins is gonna do is she's gonna show her finger with that big ring on it that shows that River Rouge was state champs. And I'm sure that she's got it up, but so she's showing it on her Facebook page to make sure that everybody sees it. But, um, you know, it's a big ring. Looks like one of these Super Bowl rings that it you see those, Bowl, you know, man. people wear. So this is River Rouge's Super Bowl, man. I, correct? She correct. just corrected me. She said yes. this is their Super this Bowl, right? This is the River Rouge Super Bowl ring. This is yes. the River Rouge Super Bowl ring. Yes. All right, go ahead and expound a little bit on what was it that they won that awarded you the ring? So thank you so much, Darwin, for again having me on your show, Vicki Dobbins from River Rouge. And um, I do several things in River Rouge now. I am an elected official, uh, school board member, and I am a, an elected precinct delegate in River Rouge. So I want to make sure that you, you understand that there's a lot of things to be done out there in River Rouge. So um, let me say that from our school, we're doing excellent. Uh, we just had a book uh, computer giveaway about two weeks ago that really turned out really, really well. They gave away about 1,300 um, computers to all the students from uh, kindergarten up to high school. Also, the students got a chance to meet their, their uh, teacher for this year. Uh, we're going to have, well, we did have virtual um, learning. And we will also have on-site learning because you have to understand all students don't do well on a computer. So if your child is not doing well um, uh, on the computer, feel free to go to either one of our schools. We have four schools uh, in River Rouge, elementary, middle, STEM, and high school. What, what and is STEM? STEM is uh, um, science, technology, uh, science school. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now you have the four different educational levels yes. that persons can go through. Yes. Now the thing is, is that when you look at the virtual, now if somebody does not have the Wi-Fi capability in their household, were you giving away? We or were also you allotting provided. Computers to? Yes, we also provided um, internet 
system for them. Yes. Okay. And uh, so everybody should be covered. If not, feel free to go to the high school. The superintendent, the administrators will walk you through that. Okay. So there should be no reason why every kid with a computer cannot um, do their assignments. Okay. So uh, we took care of that. And uh, so our superintendent is very vigilant and making sure that all students uh, get their learning uh, process done. And, and this, because this is so different, uh, we really have to work a little bit harder. And they do work hard at the new system of educating our students. Now, yeah. is the school year going to be the same as it has been in the past years? It's not going to be the same. Uh, you're going to have virtual. You're going to have students who can stay at home and do their classes at home if they're good at it. But you can also come to the school and talk to a counselor or a teacher if you're having any problems. So it's not like... Um, you know, you have to be in class for from 8 to 4, not that. But if you have a class that you're having difficulties with, come to the school. The teachers would be more than happy to help you. So the teachers will be there from yes. what time to what? Well, all teachers will be there between the hours of 8 and 3.30. Okay. And so, you and know. All those different school levels. So at the high yes. school, the Yeah, middle teachers school. have to go to school. Okay. Yes. So, um when when this we're, we're still trying to figure it out okay this is new this is going to be different for all schools so what we want you to know is feel free to come to school if you need help okay now in january they're going to tell you something different is it going very well you know do the kids, uh, uh, did they adjust to virtual learning? Uh, did some need more training than others? So I think in January we will, we will come up with something different. You'll, you'll get a different feel for it in January. Well, I guess there's two things to look at in January. One is whether or not, like you said, if the children are learning. Are they but learning? But at the same time, too, has the virus again? out? Yes, again. How is the virus, um, is it, is it, are we having problems with the virus between September and December? That's, again, something new we don't know yet. Okay. So everything right now is new, and we just are piecing it together. Well, so. this is, I think it's a new process for everybody. It is. Because I think the respective, you know, from the honorable uh, governor, Whitmer has pretty much like allotted the school districts to use their own, you know, determination. Determination of what they think. Whether or not they want yeah. to have the district open. Right. So we just kind of, we didn't open up completely. And so, uh, you know, we're just still feeling our way through. But Dr. Coleman uh, has guaranteed each parent, each school board member, that he's doing everything that we need to do in terms of sanitizing, cleaning, uh, you know, making sure the students are very safe in the school district. So if a student does come up to the school for that additional learning, learning or that yes. additional tutoring, what protocols are set in place for okay so we have the at the doors at each door we have sanitizer we have uh, masks we have uh, whatever you need right there at the door so before you go in you have to make sure that you are totally clean I guess mm -hmm. you know so you don't want to um, you don't want the students to come in and and um, get a virus that they didn't expect to get and you don't want them to take it back home. With them. And they don't want them to take it home. Right. So now do they take check temperatures and all that too? They check the temperatures, yes. Okay. Okay. And and what what is your feel in terms of say now do you think that we're getting a good handle on the virus to where come the first of the year that we may be back to or, or when do you think? Just just this is Vicky Dobbins, school okay. board member. Okay. What is your perception as to whether or not if you think that maybe this time next year, 
things might be back to somewhat normalcy. So according to Vicki Davins, uh, we have a whole year before this virus is going to dissipate. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a number that I've heard is 2022, and I believe that. Um, so you don't think, that, so you're saying that you've been hearing that it might not be until 2022 when this may be something that- That's over. Not, okay. That's completely over. But for the next year and a half, someone is gonna take the shot. People are gonna stay home. You know, we're still, still going to be on the alert. You know, we cannot drop our guard. We cannot lose our mask. We cannot stop using gloves. So again, you heard it from Vicki Dobbins, stay masked up, right? Stay masked up okay. because, you know, particles in the air, we just don't know. And as you know, um, Darwin, I am a survivor. And uh, I'm so proud to say that because I did go to Belle Isle and visit people who had the same virus that I had, but God bless me and allowed me to come to your show and say, mask up, make sure you're safe, because it wasn't a, a uh, pleasant journey that I was on, so. Well, that's one of the things that I think that they had a nice testimony out there at Bell Isle recently yes, they where did. they had the pictures yes. of persons that made their transition. Yes. You know, during that pandemic time, Absolutely. during the months of March up to the present, really. Absolutely. But uh, it was a very beautiful testimony. I'd like to uh, give a shout out to one of my friends, Liz Johnson, who lost five members of her family. I'm sorry to hear that. She has my deepest sympathy. I, I, there's all no due way. To the, to the yeah, virus? all due to the virus. To and, that. you know, we just don't know what families have had to endure because of this virus. We just don't know. And I didn't know. And um, it was, I mean, it's so touching to know that people, how many people have actually lost, lost their lives. Well, you know, the main thing is, is that we, as you said, we can't let our guard down. We cannot so we let, let our guard down. we have to make sure we stay masked up. Yes. Uh, if people ask you to make certain that you have a mask on when you go into a business or some other establishment, just do what they ask you to do. Just do I what mean, they ask you. It's not, they're not trying to be rude or anything. They just want you to be safe. And okay? not just for you to be safe, for them to be for safe For them as well, to be safe, because absolutely. they don't want to take anything home. And when yes. they have hundreds of people coming into their establishment during the course of a day, that's a hundred possible causes that could lead to them getting exactly. the virus. Exactly. So, you know, you want to just make certain that number one, you go into a store, you stay safe, but at the same or a gas station, wherever it is that you go into. Wherever it is. But the basic thing is wear your mask, make certain that you observe the social distancing. Yes. So that you can go and then hopefully next year we can say that hey, we survived it. I heard last night they're going to have the auto show that I love, and it's going to happen next year, October the 1st. Uh, and I have my fingers crossed that by October the 1st, we can go to the auto show without a mask, that we can enjoy, you know, all the fun things that they have at the auto show, that they will give us a super duper auto show next year. So, um, yes. That's my prayer that by next October, but I'm here in 2022. Well, I was going to let you give a shout out, but I didn't know you could give it out to the shout, out, you know, to the uh, auto show. But if that's your shout out that we'll have an auto show <laughs> next year in October, that's good. So you heard that from Vicky Diamonds. Yes. So make sure that we have an auto show next year where everybody's going to be safe and we're going to be able to go and hopefully put some of this in the past yes but i do i would like to say one or two things Just um, one you thing, know one thing okay ahead. so you know i am avid um ida wilder okay. and uh we're uh, we were not able to open this year however those who owned homes they were able to go to their home this summer uh, they will have a closing on october the 10th and after that uh ida wilder will be closed until next April. So uh, 
stand by because we look forward to um, a party next April or May for the Detroit Idlewilders. Okay. Well, we, we might have 30 seconds. If you got that second that you were about to say, you can do it in 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, our president is, doc, is uh, Jerry Lynn uh, Williams, and she is the president of the uh, Detroit Idlewilders. I'd also like to give a shout out to the NAACP. Our president is um, uh, Gina Wilson Stewart. Uh, on October the 20th, we will have a virtual dinner. And um, I talked about River Root School, so that's it. Okay. Thank you. And then I'll give a little shameless plug, too, because I'll be the host, host. for yes. that event. Absolutely. That's going to be that virtual, and the cost of it is going to be $20.20. .20. So yes. Lonnie Love is going to be the keynote speaker for the event. So we'll be giving out awards to individuals. And please, it's a great cause. Please come out and support. Again, this is the Western Wayne County. NAACP chapter presided by Ms. Gina Wilson-Stewart. So again, Lonnie Love is going to be, and I'll be one of the hosts for the event. So I just want to thank you, Ms. Dobbins, for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Darwin. I'm, you know, I'm so honored to uh, come whenever you ask me. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you. Okay. And you've been watching Detroit. You've been watching from Holland Park. And again, this is Expose Under the Sun. I want to thank Mr. R.J. Watkins and Henry Tyler for allowing us into your living rooms and your vehicles, depending on how the way you may watch us or hear us. And we want to thank also those of you that pick up a Detroit Native Sun newspaper. That's our sponsor. And if you'd like to advertise in the Detroit Native Sun newspaper, you can contact Ms. Valerie Lockhart at area code 313-357-5944. And you can pick up a copy of the Detroit Native Sun newspaper in your local Kroger supermarkets. Again, just a quick reminder, we're doing a car wash, local 1191. It's free. Come by, give your support. And then also this coming Saturday over at the... Um, Soul Village at 12901 Auburn. We're having a meeting of the minds. It's hosted by the Detroit branch of Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus. So please come out, show your support. It's in Detroit. So we've got chapters all over the entire caucuses, all over the entire state. So please come out. This is under the auspices of the president, our president for the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus, Mr. Keith Williams. Again, thanking Vicki Dobbins, thanking Ms. Alexis Ramsey for coming by, and also we're thanking you for being our listening and viewing audience. Again, have a safe and peaceful week. See you next week, same time, same station.